After the screech, it starts falling. In a moment, fear gripped us. It was an angel of the Lord that suspended what I just experienced at this hotel could actually be a sign of what this country is about to face. Well, this really happened. I'm just gonna tell you the full story and I'll let you come to your own conclusions. So me and my wife were staying at a Hyatt in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And of course, this wasn't the best Hyatt. Uh, it wasn't a five-star hotel by any means. However, we were at least expecting to, you know, be safe in our endeavors. And so we checked into our room. We were walking from the front desk to the elevator. And when we got inside them, there were some spots on the floor, but it wasn't really that big of a deal so far, right? I mean, we just thought it was some stains. We obviously assumed that the elevator was going to safely get us to the sixth floor. So we get in, it's also a little smelly, must, but again, we dismissed it. It was late at night, we had been running all around and we were just trying to go to bed. It was like 2 a.m. I was like, let's get us to the sixth floor. So hit the button. As the elevator starts going up, we start hearing these like small screeches. Like, And then what happened next is something that I think we'll probably be processing for the rest of our life. We get to the sixth floor and the doors don't open. I kid you not, we heard the loudest screech I have ever heard in a hotel before in my entire life. Shook, exactly where it was on the sixth floor. I mean, this is the stuff out of movies. It was so surreal. The doors don't open. And sure enough, after the screech, it starts falling. In a moment, fear gripped us at first. But we looked at one another and we made a decision right then and there that we were not going to bow down to what was being offered on our plate. See, we knew the word of God. We know Psalms 91, scripture that promised us that we will live and not die. And we understand the power of our words. I myself am someone who actually was in a situation similar to this before, a little bit different. Three years ago, I was in an accident and cracked my skull in half. I've been on the brink of life and death before. I've seen the other side before, right? And understand some things about the spiritual world that have completely changed my perspective. I know that it's God's plan that I stay on this earth so that we can continue doing his will. Immediately when that happened, in a moment, it was like fear tried gripping us because obviously the elevator was just collapsing. At, it was, again, it was like a moment. It's, it was all just a swirl. But we looked at one another and we made a decision to speak the name of Jesus. Like that's all we said. We said, Jesus. We were like the blood of Jesus. And it was like all at the same time, the words I said, not now. And as the elevator was falling, I still don't even know what speed we were at because in a moment it was suspended mid air. It just stayed right there. As someone who has been miraculously saved from death before, three years ago, actually, I was in a two and a half week coma. The hospital pronounced me as someone who was about to die. They gave me no hope to live again. They even asked for my last will. They were talking about me in the past tense. They were asking what I was like, but yet on the week of November 12th, 2021, God miraculously healed me, brought me back to life. And I've been living to tell the story ever since. I went on to completely recover against all odds. And it was a glorious miracle. And here I am again, facing life and death. But in that moment, as the elevator was falling, it literally was suspended midair, slowed down, the doors opened, and we were back on the first floor and we got out laughing to one another. Sure enough, after talking to a hotel employee, he proceeded to tell us that 20 people had just been on the elevator before us and that the systems had completely malfunctioned. He went and checked them and saw that the elevator was not working accordingly. And he even remarked that it was amazing that we were able to safely and peaceably get back to the first floor as if there was nothing wrong with the elevator. It was a verified miracle. It was an angel of the Lord that suspended us midair. And of course, I know there's going to be feedback of people laying different claims to different situations, explaining different possibilities. But all I know is that when the Bible says in Psalms 91, those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. That's the truth. But here's what's even crazier. We are living in a nation right now, especially it is October 1st. And it is like within one day, everything has shifted in the nation. What if I was to tell you that what I just experienced at this hotel could actually be a sign of what this country is about to face? Call me crazy, but here's the prophetic outline.
One day, we are now facing the port strike. We are facing the Iran attack on Israel, which is one of the most major escalations of the war in the Middle East that we've had in the past 10 to 20 years, at least, if not the past 50 to 60. We've also had Russia escalating their nuclear threats about the whole war in Ukraine and the long range missiles, and things are just spiraling quickly out of hand. China and Taiwan and Japan is now moving ships around and China is feeling more threatened than they ever have been. And if you talk to anyone who really knows the China-Taiwan situation, they'll tell you the same thing, that things have really never been as escalated as they are right now. It is like every single fire on this earth has erupted in even just one day. And we've been talking about this, about how many trusted, not just pastors and prophets and, and friends of mine, but just the everyday person has been sensing an immense awareness that great war is coming. And it doesn't even take faith to be aware of that, right? Like that's just calling a spade a spade. Then, of course, we just faced one of the worst hurricanes America has had in the past 10 to 15 years. And now poison has been released in the air in Georgia. And it's like all these compounding effects. For many, some might say that America's economy is booming, which I, I don't know how they could say that, but these are of course the so-called experts and the, the Davos executives. Everyone thinks that we're on the sixth floor and that we're all gaining and that all is well. And of course, we're never gonna go to World War III. And of, of course, we're always gonna stay safe. And let me say this clearly, that if we do not get ready for what is to come, if we do not enter the secret place right now, we will find ourselves falling hard from the sixth floor. And if it wasn't for the mercy of God, the ability for our awareness of his word to respond in that moment by faith. And of course, I'm not claiming that we were saved from death because of our own works or our own merit, but there is a deep importance to understanding what God is saying in the moment of intensity that will save you from what is to come. And there is a great wisdom in storing up what you need to prepare so that when famine comes, you are ready. Things are going to hit hard in this country and in the entire world. Here's the thing though. You don't have to be afraid. You can actually rejoice. Me and my wife, were laughing about this circumstance. We still are. We're not bawling our eyes out. We're not bowing down. We walked out of that elevator laughing. Even as we were falling, I was smiling because I know my God, he's never failed me and he's not gonna fail me yet. And even if I did die in that moment, even if I did leave, I cannot fail. I will not fail because it's all been rigged for victory from the start. And I'm more than confident that even if the elevator would have hit the ground and my body would have died, the Lord would have brought me back to life again or found some way somehow to work it all out for my good. And even if I didn't come back, I would still be a winner because I understand that in Christ, I cannot fail. If he be for me, who can be against me? And this life that we live down here on this earth is so temporary. And just surviving isn't thriving. Just surviving isn't the purpose of life. Instead, to find purpose is to actually find the one who created you from the start. It's to find the one that loved me even when I failed him, even when I rebelled against him, even when I never deserved him, yet he still chose me, yet he was still for me, yet he was still speaking to me and holding out his hand, showing me his mercy. I don't know about you, but I've realized that my own actions, my own contoctions and fall so flat. They're temporary. They're gonna burn up just like everything else. I realized that I just wanna listen to him. I wanna not just enter into a prayer and where I'm talking to God and I'm telling God all the things that he needs to do for me. But instead, I wanna be in the place where I enter the secret place, where I ask him what he wants me to do, where I actually ask him what he is thinking about, how he is doing. That's where we need to be. We need to be in an intimate place of repentance and love for God right now where we love him more than the things of this world, where we love him more than loving ourselves and where we fill ourselves up with this word to the place where no matter what the enemy throws at us in the coming months, we are prepared. And we do not just go along with what we face. When the elevator falls in your life, you're not just gonna cry and bawl your eyes out and scream, God, God, why is this happening? No, because instead you're gonna realize that it's not God that tripped up the elevator. It was, it was probably some obese people after the in and out in Texas. <laughs> that messed up that elevator, right? It wasn't God's fault. Now, was it a prophetic sign that I believe God used and might just be speaking through? Yes. I do believe that it is, a, it is, it is almost like a physical example to me that happened in my life 
that I believe is, is almost a physical example of what the nation is facing. That the nation might feel like they're heading up and the nation might feel like we've got it all in store and that we can always work it out on our own ability. But it all can come crashing down in a moment if we do not hold tightly to what we had from the start. And that's what the scripture says in Revelation chapter 3 and that's what Jesus said. Again, this is the prophetic message that I know God is speaking over this nation right now. He says this, I will ask nothing more of you except that you hold tightly to what you have until I come. I want to read that scripture one more time. I will ask nothing more of you except that you hold tightly to what you have until I come. What is Jesus talking about here? What do you have that you need to hold tightly to? Is it your own desires? Is it your own flesh? Listening to your attitude and repaying evil for evil and walking in unforgiveness and going along with what you're facing? No, that's not what he's talking about. Instead, actually, Jesus is saying, hold tightly to the word that I've already given you. Hold tightly to the Bible that I've already written for you. Sure, it was, it was through the hands of many men and, and through the chapters and books of many, yet it all includes the same message of Jesus Christ. America was given the opportunity to walk in biblical principles from the start, that if we do not hold tightly to those biblical principles, if we do not return to our God as a country, as a even church, because I'll be honest, most of the church right now is not even the church, biblically speaking. I believe Jesus would look at the pastors of many of the churches of America and ask them, who are you? Who are you to claim that you know me? How can we be a country that says we love God and love protecting the innocent, yet we blindly walk past 60 million children killed in the womb, not even given the right to breathe, yet we want to claim we fight for the innocent? How can we continue voting based off of our own preferences as if it's a personality contest instead of policies. I hate to break it to you, but you may not like President Trump. You may not like 45, and he may talk a certain way or do certain things that you just don't like to endorse. But I'm here to tell you that you have actually got to look at the policies of candidates. And when you look at the policies of Kamala Harris, who is openly for until the ninth month, by the way, there were 12,000 late-term in America this past year, 98% of them only happened because of financial inconvenience. Of course, Kamala Harris, who's funded by Planned Parenthood, which is completely for the eugenicide of African Americans. If, if you don't believe me, just look up Margaret Sanger and her history. Again, I can go into more details on this, but like if you start actually looking at policies of candidates, you'll see also Kamala Harris wants men in women's restrooms. She, if we're not faithful in what we've been given now, we're not going to know what to do when the war hits, when famine hits, when the economy goes off of its rocker. We're not going to know what to do. And I'm not telling you this as a doom and gloom message as if you need to be so afraid. Instead, you prepare and you rejoice because your God is for you and not against you. You rejoice because greater is the one living in you than he that's in the world. And you've got to know your tribe right now. You've got to be sold out. You've got to be committed. There's a reason why Jesus said, I only want you if you're actually for me, if you're all the way. People think we can play this game on the fence where we say we love God one day, but then six days out of the week, we live just like the rest of the world. We watch everything just like the rest of the world. We listen to songs and playlists just like the rest of the world. Who are we anymore? We've got to return to who we've been set up to be in Christ. It may look like you're nothing and you feel condemned and ashamed and you don't know what to do with your life. Just return to the heart of God. You'll save yourself from a lifetime of pain. God is creating a Goshen in the midst of a famine, in the midst of an Egypt where no one knows what to do. The electric system is only going to become more unstable. Know who you're called to run with in life. You don't have to be alone. We're traveling all over the place to churches, events, preaching the gospel for free. We're going to be in Charlotte, Carolina and Richmond, Virginia actually this week. So screenshot these details um, if you'd like to come. Get behind a message that you can believe in and run with. YouTube is suggesting this next video to you for a reason. It is such an important message that you need to know. And if you'd like to see exactly why, click right here.